Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie, a third grade teacher in California, sharing new teacher tips that hopefully make your life a little bit easier. In my last video, I shared how to use the custom theme builder to create your own daily slides template. And in today's video, I'm going to share 10 of my favorite tips and tricks when using Google Slides. Now, before we get started, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. If you do enjoy this type of content, please give it a thumbs up and let's go ahead ahead and jump right into it. Now my first tip is to add timers to your slides. This is also a great classroom management hack because by having a countdown timer on your slide, it gives students a visual to see exactly how much time is left on their assignment. So to do this, I'm going to go to my slide and click insert video. Then the YouTube search bar is going to pop up. I'm going to search for a five minute timer. This could of course be any increment of time that you need. Then select the one I want. I can then resize it if I need to, but this size looks good. Then over on the right here are your settings. Right now, the default is that the timer will start on a click, but you can also change that to playing automatically so that right when the slide switches in your slideshow, it's going to start counting down or you can play manually. Now this goes along with my next tip, which is to add videos to your slides, but to have direct start and end points. This can be really helpful if you have a video that you wanna show your students, but you only wanna show them maybe a one minute portion in the middle of the video. Or maybe you're having your students do an assignment on their own on Google Slides, and you want them to only watch a certain portion of a video that you've inserted into the slide for independent work. By adjusting the settings, you can make it start exactly where you want and end exactly where you want it to. So say I had this video about the water cycle and my students need to respond to the question, what is condensation? I only want them to watch the section about condensation. So I'm going to enter the time the video starts and the time I want it to end. Then when I'm watching that slide and I click play, that video is going to start at the time I've entered. This next tip is to insert GIFs into your slides. This adds a fun little touch and it can also be used to give an animated background to your slide. So to do this, you can search for any GIF on Google Images or on the Jiffy website. One touch I like to add, especially on special occasions, is to add animated confetti or maybe animated snow. So I'm going to search for confetti. Then I'm going to save the GIF to my computer. You can insert it directly onto your slide and it's going to be animated. Or if you want it to be locked in place so it doesn't accidentally get moved as you add text and all the other things to that slide, then you can open up the theme builder and add the GIF there. Then it's going to be locked in place onto your slides. So this can be really fun if it's a special occasion like somebody's birthday or maybe the last day of school or maybe you just want that feel of winter and you want it to be snowing. My next tip is to use word art. So I did use this in my last Google slide video, but I think word art is just a really fun way to make your titles and text pop and you have more options in the types of colors and borders that you add to your fonts. So to do this, you're going to go up to insert and then select word art and then you can change the size, the font. And of course there are a lot of extra fonts there's a whole Google font library if you don't see one that you like. So when selecting a font, you could go up and click more fonts and then it's going to open up an entire font library and then you can select the ones you like and then those will pop up into your font options. I really like using Titan 1 because it is a nice big bold font and then I can choose to fill in the font color and make the outline a little bit thicker. And then when word art is directly onto your slide, it works more like an image where you can click and drag to resize it. And a little trick is to hold down the shift key when you're resizing that font if you want the proportions to stay the same. So my next trick is how to crop an image to a shape. So this is also called masking. So right here I have this image and it is a rectangle, but I want it to be a circle. So I'll select the crop tool, the shape I want, and there you go. And of course you can select any of the shapes that are available. My next tip is one of my favorites, and that is adding an image placeholder. I have found this so helpful when I give my students an assignment where I want them to actually add an image of their own into the slide. Something I noticed before the placeholder option was that my students would insert a picture and it would be totally resized, whether it's too big or too small, or it just wouldn't quite fit on the slide. And so by adding an image placeholder, students will know exactly where to add that image and it's going to be the size you want onto that slide. You're going to go into your theme editor and click view theme builder. Then click insert image and image placeholder. Select the shape that you want. 
exit out, and you have this image placeholder here. Then when you're on the slide, you or your students will just click this button and add the image they need for the assignment, and it's going to automatically fit the image into the box. You can even mask an image into any shape you want. So when I discovered this, I got so excited and it has completely changed the way I make those Google slide assignments. So this goes along with my next trick, which is to add a text placeholder. So whenever you open a Google slide, you notice that it says click to add text. And then when you click that text just disappears and you're able to start typing. Well, you can actually add those text placeholders yourself on any of your slides. So there's a couple ways that you can do it. So one trick is to actually just copy those text placeholders that are already on Google slide templates. So I would just go to those text boxes, click on the outside of it, right hand click copy, then paste it into any of my slides. I can change the font and it's ready to go. That would be a really quick and easy way to do it to any of your slides. Another option is to use the theme builder. So to do this, you're going to go up to view theme builder and then you're going to click insert text and then you're going to have those placeholder options. Now those will automatically be part of your slide layout. I really like using these text placeholders, especially for student assignments so that students know exactly where to type and they don't have to worry about highlighting and deleting the text before they start typing. They can just click and go. My next trick is to create drag and drop piles. So this might be when students are doing an assignment where they need to actually click and drag sticky notes or math manipulatives if it's a math assignment. So you need a stack of that shape. So to do this, you're going to insert whatever shape you want. So say I need a stack, of digital post-its. So I'm going to make it a square and now I'm going to make duplicates of that shape. So here's a little keyboard shortcut for you. Instead of clicking Command C for copy and Command V for paste, you can just click Command D and it will automatically duplicate it. So I'm going to click Command D to duplicate and do that for however many I want. And then I'm going to select all, click align horizontally in the center and align vertically in the middle. So now you can drag and drop however many you want. You can even make a duplicate copy of the actual stack and select change shape. And then you'll have just another stack of another shape or maybe another color. And there you go. So this next one is a keyboard shortcut that I love to use. Sometimes on a Google slide, I might have multiple images or text and they start overlapping each other and I just need to change the order. So have one image appear in the front of another. Now you could right click and go to order and select if you want to send it back or send it to the front. However, there's actually a keyboard shortcut that makes it a lot easier. So you're going to use command and then your arrow keys. So if you want to bring an object to the front, you're going to click command up. And if you want to send it to the back, you can click command down. My next trick is to insert audio into your slides using the Chrome extension Moat. So Moat is a Chrome extension that I mentioned in my must have Chrome extensions for teachers. So if you need more ideas, be sure to check that video out. And it's basically a voice recorder. So if you notice on my Google slide, there's this purple button with an M on it. So that is the Moat recorder. And so when I click it, I'm going to be taken to the voice recorder. And then when I'm done recording, I can easily insert that audio into my slide. This can be really helpful when adding audio directions to a slide. If my students are working on an assignment independently, or maybe I just want to record myself reading a quick excerpt that I want my students to listen to. It can be a really useful tool that works really well with Google slides. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that gave you some fresh ideas on what you can do with Google slides. If you did find this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for all my newest teacher tips and I'll catch you next time. Bye everyone.